Well, 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 it's been so long since we last spoke. I've been dealing with uh, computer issues ever since 5 a.m. this morning, but plenty to talk about as the Halloween passes over. Hope everyone had a nice little time there. Uh, if you're like me, just kind of sitting at home and watching The Mandalorian, it was a good time, man. It was a really good time. But I'll tell you this, I did get a chance to install my 3090 Ti. And oh my god, it is oh so glorious over here as I stare into uh, my computer box. Anyways, uh, <laughs> you don't give a fuck about that. Let's talk about some goddamn magic and money of business over here. So let's put the folks uh, let's put the folks on the crown sheet application, which we found at app.crownsheet.net. And uh, what do we see that is different today? Open interest rise in a little bit as price action does or did <laughs> yesterday head up to the short term or I guess medium term uh, top side region, about 14,200 ish region. So what does that kind of add on to as it is right now? Well, not it doesn't really tell us all that much right now but it is kind of just essentially um what's the word that i'm looking for confirm our former narrative that bitcoin's mostly going to be going sideways here for a little bit but long term more or less good and there's going to be a big focus on long term today looking at bitcoin dominance pretty much the same from yesterday to today as well 63 and a half percent of which we've seen that steadily rising four or five percent over the past a few weeks and we'll do and we'll do a nice little check-in on that one as well and uh, what else we got? Fear and Greed Index also popping down at one point from a 73 to a 72. Nothing too crazy right there. And I'm wondering if there's any parrots uh, barking around today. And whoa, all sorts of weird things going on right here. Uh, FTX and OKX posting like, uh, okay, that's actually just deceiving the way that this uh, chart's kind of making it out. Yeah, negative rates for FTX at negative 0.01%. Still nothing crazy as well, but it is, you know, it, it, it is kind of uncharacteristic to see that, especially after a short term move to the upside. Uh, buy bid in who will be uh, not point out one percent so yes nothing crazy right there bitmex uh, uh, neutral and binance neutral so with that in mind we'll actually just go into the charts themselves and uh, i'd imagine that that is probably going to come back into view maybe early this week weekend is kind of a weird time but yes bitcoin okay so let's uh let's let's follow up on yesterday's short-term uh, time frame analysis of which I believe we spoke about this on Friday. In fact, I uploaded a video or Elsa uploaded a video on Twitter, um, basically going over, like usually if you say during the TA nerd session, I'll give like my actual opinion on price action. And it's basically basically still that. Uh, quick move up to 14.2 and then coming back down and uh, probably setting it a base for the week to come. And uh, I still pretty much think the same thing as that. Anyways, to follow up on yesterday's short-term time from analysis, what do we say coming into both Friday and Saturday, we said actually taking out this high here on the 30th of October at 13,675 would initiate a run all the way up to about 14.2 to 14.250 ish region, of which we have a nice little blue box, or I guess I don't have a blue box right here, but I do have a nice horizontal in line with the one spot 272 extension from this prior consolidation right here. Target was hit, and what happens now? Well, in classic weekend fashion for Bitcoin. If I had to put my money on it right now, which I would actually not be trading this right now because I don't really care to trade over the weekends, but uh, but I would be looking for this one to actually come back down to the lower side of the range, somewhere around low 13,000 bucks. Yes, technically speaking, it is holding on to the blue box territory right now, but I don't trust it. And I feel like we've just seen this uh, many, 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 many times before. Um, but again, this is not to say that I'm like medium or even long-term bearish on Bitcoin. No, in fact, not at all, especially with the way that the monthly and uh, and the weekly close on CMEs and, we, and, we just, and just getting the monthly last night for a spot price action as well. We'll be, we'll be putting in a big focus on that. But yes, short term, you know, if I did have call for right now, probably would be looking for Bitcoin to maybe grind this area out a little bit between about 13.7 and, and maybe 13.9 and then come back down to start the week, probably somewhere around 13.2, any, any, anywhere, anywhere around 13.2 or even all the way down to 12.9 is fine by me. And I am essentially long term bearish or sorry, <laughs> bad slip of the tongue right there. Long term bullish as long as Bitcoin is above 12,900 ish region. So I do look at this as a nice consultant range and if it does break the same sort of implications that we spoke about before would essentially still be had as it would drive targets all the way down to uh, low twelve thousand dollars I'd say about 12 one would be about right uh, let's see if that matches up with anything on the daily yeah that will uh, <laughs> actually the daily uh, the daily 55 not even not even there just yet so I imagine that over the next few days we probably do see it come back up around there uh, but more importantly you know, as it is right now, that's, you know, that's, 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 that's a little bit further away. Um, so what if I'm wrong? What if, uh, what if Bitcoin actually does just green deal to its way to the fucking heavens right now? How, what is, uh, what is the next big thing to be aware of? Well, I'd say just going to, you know, uh, sim you know, simply put level by level, I'd be looking at the one spot 414 and the one spot 272 as the next sort of, uh, uh overhead resistance area, um, of which as long as we're living below it, I'm essentially looking for a short term and somewhat, I guess, medium term pullback as well. Like 
like I said, down to the low $13,000 region, uh, at which point I actually do think that that will be at least a, a you know a nice little opportunity. Um, however, if Bitcoin does break above the one spot four two or sorry one spot four one four, what would be the next target on top of that? Well, we're getting to the areas that are just you know very, very much un um, unexperienced in Bitcoin land. I mean, going back here into 2018, you can see that Bitcoin barely even spent a month above fourteen thousand bucks. So, to, so, so, so to put that in context, we don't really have too much to be going off of anymore. Um, Fib extensions will get the algo targets. Yes, uh, you know, troll under bands uh, can you know can be quite useful in some like this uh divergences can be can, can be quite useful for 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 defining local tops and uh looking at the past prior action as well i mean i suppose the next major area to be aware of above there would be about 14 8 to fifteen thousand bucks now i do think that bitcoin actually probably does just work its way upwards and onwards towards those regions over time but uh if i had to you know you know if i had to call it right now i would actually be looking for bitcoin to come back down into the lower side of the uh, of the more short-term range and then give a try after basing out for a bit of time uh, uh, as it is right now, going over the lower term timeframes, let's uh, let's get let's 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 get through this so we can actually go into the fun stuff. And I want to, uh, as always, kind of preference this when I don't really feel all that you know compelled by something. Uh, this is one of those times. Short term timeframes not all that compelling, mostly because it is a weekend and also because we just got the monthly and we're going to see the weekly close later today, and those have massive major implications, uh, which I do think um, take precedence over just about anything else. And you know, of course, everyone's got different strategies and everyone's on different timeframes. Completely fine. Just you know, when you, when you're making videos like this or at least when i'm making making videos like this uh, i i think right now is probably the better time to be focused on in the long term uh, so as it is right now four hour stokes going to be coming down yes uh, rejecting getting above the critical zone uh, not anything too crazy four hour jewel a little bit of sell pressure there but not anything too crazy we do not see the same thing on cmes or at least if it is going to line up it's probably going to take some time like probably into maybe late monday or tuesday if it actually does line up um and then four hour rsi while it is overall constructive and while i still do like it i feel like i said the same thing for the last few weeks but I, I feel that way you know that's and that has been the right call uh i actually would be looking for some short-term downside based upon this as well uh historical volatility percentile also incredibly useful right now too because it has accurately gotten this range so to speak so once once uh once 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 we start to kind of travel below the moving average on this and it gets a negative slope on it that is your that is a good signal that we are going to go into a sideways market for a little bit of time as it goes into a contraction phase now looking at a four hour is not anything like too crazy obviously it's more more so speaking towards like the medium term time frames if anything um but you know still still to be aware of what's going on right now yes that does kind of amount towards bitcoin essentially just going to and fro playing at that same range as before and i suspect that we'll see mostly the same things on the lower time frames below this but let's uh let's let's definitely check in just because you never know what fucking parrots are barking in your face and uh sometimes it actually can be some really 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 good trades if you do catch a one-off but uh that's not what we see right here <laughs> it's not what we see at all in fact uh three hour stokes still headed down a three hour jewel not not given anything uh three hour rsi again constructive but short term a little bit of downside pressure there and more importantly historic volatility percentile is clearly contraction right here and during a contraction phase i'm essentially looking for consolidation and consolidation in a range basically between where you know the third let's just call it like 13.8 to the upside and 13,000 to the downside although technically speaking it's about 100 bucks lower or at least that's where i have the next blue box uh what about the buy hourly do we see the same thing here as well we see buy hourly stokes look like they do want to uh, have a nice uh maybe try to cross the upside right here but not anything too crazy not not anything worth uh, worth uh, at least in my opinion trading on right now uh could we potentially i saw ooh, i saw i see some dots right there could we potentially be putting in some hidden bullish divergence uh yes uh oh no uh where's that one coming from no that would actually be wrong um that is uh that that is due to my settings right now i'm actually i've, I've been playing with I, I always play around the settings on this one but no that would be an incorrect read so that is nothing um historical volatility percentile again same thing we're just seeing a contract a little more aggressively so what we want to see is the hourly kind of precipitate all of these and then what you're going to see is the hourly lead into the two hour lead into the three hour lead in the four hour most likely and that's going to be the next big insight likely for timing or potentially timing timing uh the likelihood of the next breakout or or breakdown to be fair uh hourly what do we see hourly stokes looks like they do want to pop back up around here nice little trend line coming in from the 20th of october so you know it's a big one just kidding all right i'll just decide um you know what does this align with yeah we're probably going to see a little bit of ebb and flow here and there technically is a little bit of hidden bullish divergence here as well care ticket rsi uh, initiating that so if i had to call it right now extremely short term extremely short term probably by the time that you know this day or or, or you know may, maybe in like a few hours after this video 
videos posted, it's probably already like going to be nullified, but extremely short term, probably do look for a move back up, maybe around like a 13,850, maybe even 13,9 ish region. But I would look for Bitcoin to put in another kind of short term top right again, uh, right around there again, and then trade back down, you know, as the day progresses into Monday. And that is when the real market begins as the US markets open. Of course, historical volatility percentile here is is obviously contracting a lot more aggressively than the other time frames. No shit, because it's a slower term time frame. But, you know, we want to see this one come down quite a fair bit before really uh, looking at the other ones is like that a fire off and efficacious signal. So again, you know, a little bit of ebb and flow here, extremely short term. Yes, maybe a pop back up towards like 13850 or 139. But I would be looking for Bitcoin to come back down, like I said, into range after that. And by the range, I mean anywhere, you know, ba 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 uh, basically anywhere between here and here. But, you know, after you go test some resistances, probably going to go test some supports. But we could probably also do here as well, assuming that this does this does kind of mark off the high of this consolidation, where it can actually come up with a new range. And that's going to come up with new projections, and that's going to come up with new targets. But we'll probably have to wait until tomorrow anyway. So this is why I'm just not too interested in the lower term time frames right now, because we don't, we're, we're, we're missing pieces of information right now. It's like a puzzle that's, in, that's incomplete. So with that said, we'll go to the medium term time frame so there'll be a little bit more there uh but again still it's just you know the the, the focus is on not even the daily but weekly monthly bi-monthly uh looking at 12 hour right now we see 12 hour stocks going nice and north they actually did play off that that trend line that we spoke about yesterday so there you go um and i'd and i'd imagine that they probably do take back up a little bit more here although it is a bit uh, it, it does feel a little bit uh kind of corkscrewed up a bit um but you know again not anything too crazy and this is this is secondary to all the more important Important things. Of course, there is a little bit of bearish divergence forming right here as well between this high and potentially this high as well, but it is not necessarily confirmed a local high just yet, although I suspect it probably will in the next tick. And then, yes, you will have a very slight amount of bearish divergence. And, you know, where's your natural target going to be down towards uh, somewhere around the 21 typically? And that is about 13.2. So that would be the low side of the range. Like I said, anything, you know, anything, anything down around here between about 12.9 and 13.1 or I guess 13.2 uh, is fine by me. <laughs> it's like it's like I get to decide to no of course not um, but uh, but you, you know you get what I'm saying and historical volatility percentile does look like it actually is still in the process of, of, of you know of expanding here so to kind of make a relationship between the short term time frames and the medium term time frames is we're probably going to be looking for the short term time frames play out a little bit of a range sideways and down the medium term time frames take over and we see the expansion phase probably come with another move to the upside which we'll talk about soon enough um anyways uh going into do we do we want to look at the day yeah of course we want to look at the daily daily looks fine daily looks good daily looks uh nice and pretty what about daily stokes eh, a little bit under pressure but technically to the upside right now but jesus christ do i do i not trust that at the current moment especially on a weekend that is uh that that looks like asking for trouble same thing with daily rsi um technically you know, could, you know, could it be forming a little bit of bearish divergence here? You know, if we do, if we do confirm a local high here, but, uh, but that'll, that'll actually at least take another day at the very least, and then could drive targets down towards that, you know, 12, nine, or, or, or we'll just say $13,000 area. It's just easier to say. Um, but I, you know, I essentially just kind of refer to that as a low side of the range. Um, other than that, what else we want to check out before we get into the fun stuff? Um, Eh, two, why, might as well check out the two-day. Two-day is going to be closing tonight, I believe. Yes, indeed it is. Do we see anything of note here? Yeah, we do. Two-day stokes will very likely cross the downside. That's not a death sense in and of itself, but it would drive short-term momentum to the downside. Very likely, again, down to those, uh, down to, uh, you know, at the very least to 13000 bucks. Uh, we have seen many tops kind of come within this region in the critical zone, but uh, as you have seen in very, 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 very dramatic up markets in the past from 2015 to 2018 in particular, you know, it can spend some time within that region, of course. So with that in mind, you know, it's time it's a little bit more short-term time to be cautious here, uh, but long-term, as we get into it, uh, I have a lot more or perhaps uh, perhaps uh, interesting things to be saying. Um, what about three-day? I think we close. Yeah, we close that one tonight as well. So two-day, three-day, and weekly all's closing tonight. Three-day is probably going to come under pressure here, I, I imagine too. And uh, in looking at three-day RSI, again, very good. But short-term, I would be, you know, again, I, I have to say it. This is incredibly constructive long-term. This is very good fucking read long-term. But short-term, you know, you know, does it look like it wants to come back down and, and play off a move off the uh, off at, at the very least the exponential? Probably, yes. So, so everything kind of lining up in that regard. And now we can get into the fun stuff. So with that in mind, or actually, should we go over our secondary charts first? Yeah, we should probably do that really quick. Um, is there anything to be aware of on? Uh, four hour no not really or at least not anything that's too compelling what about 12 hour again not really what about daily uh eh, not really no all right so let's get into the fun stuff now 
Okay, so we only, I, you know, I only, I, I only really look at this like uh, a couple times a month, uh, usually at the beginning of the month and at the end of the month, and it is this. It's the accumulation distribution indicator right here, and uh, I only care about one thing on this indicator. I only care about the slope, and it, the slope analysis of this has actually gotten just about every major pivot in Bitcoin's history uh, to date. Um, now, it doesn't necessarily get it perfectly, but it does get the momentum and the long-term drives very, 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 very well. And what I'm talking about is this baby down here, and as you can see, right now as of this last tick that we just got to or i guess today november uh the slope remains positive on this i don't care that it's green or red i don't see fucking colors it's christmas to me baby and uh <laughs> it doesn't mean nothing um but uh, but the fact that this does still have a positive slope does make me essentially bullish into november and i do think that bitcoin will be making new highs on top of that bitcoin did officially close the monthly dildo above the top side trolling band that was 13,340 close uh sorry 13,340 for the top side trolling band we closed closed 13816 on stamp so yes i do think that bitcoin very likely to put in uh, a new high on this run probably towards if i had to call it right now like 15 or 16000 um but uh are we in the tna session yet or do i have to fucking watch my language eh close enough man close enough uh but yes you know looking at this right here this is it's very fucking good okay this is very fucking good um listen i want to be as fair and, and balanced as possible uh kind of like fox news but um i Yes, you can have some downsides. Yes, you know, Bitcoin Bitcoin could very easily come back down to like 11 and a half thousand, but I look at that as a major opportunity. Um, so fair enough. Uh, there we go. Anyways, uh, what do we have back on over here? Monthly, ooh, monthly DMI actually not far enough a signal here. So I'm a little bit surprised to see this. Uh, DMI plus is dominant. Yes, so that is good. But the ADX not strengthening just yet. So that is a, you know, I, yeah, I actually, actually was looking for that to, to, uh, to fire off this month. It looks like it's not going to happen, but it will have a chance next month, obviously. And uh, looking at monthly MACD increasing its momentum as well as Bitcoin does clo close above the top side trolling demand. We're in a macro rally right now. As long as Bitcoin's close and monthly builds above the top side, Toronto to ban it is well it's more it's more powerful than even a weekly of which bitcoin's gonna have a chance to do the same thing on the weekly tonight as well same area by the way too at 13,350 ish region as long as bitcoin closes above there i look at this as still in the process or, or in progress of rally essentially and uh, i would not be willing to call any sort of a long-term or or especially macro top until bitcoin at the very least closes a weekly delta below the top side trolling demand and even then the first time that it does it it's probably not going to be uh it's probably not going to be the actual top it'll probably you know probably the first one's typically a fake out the second one or third one do typically have very good hit rates uh but looking at this right here you know again just 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 kind of measuring out anytime that we've seen a similar signature to like this where bitcoin gets a weekly closure above the top side trolling band it's been a couple of fake outs in the past like you see uh i wouldn't even consider this one right here but this one right here yes i would and uh but but other than that actually haven't really been able to find any any real ones uh, anytime that we've seen a signature like this well i'll, I'll let the data kind of just speak for itself you see this rally right here before closing the next uh, the next uh, weekly delta below the top side Toronto band before 50% 57% rally is put in then then you got the same thing right here just a few weeks later and another 50% rally to the upside now I'm not necessarily saying that this is always going to be the same you know uh, behavior but I do think that is rather interesting then you got this whole run from 2015 to 2018 right here and uh, well again just let the data speak for itself 66 80 and 80% and right there 50% uh, right there on that that rally uh 45 percent or almost 45 percent right there on that rally uh about 20 percent on this rally or almost 20 percent a little bit more of a muted one this one a big bad one 100 percent right there and this one getting about 41 percent you know you get where i'm going with this you can go you can you, you know you're free to do this on you know on your own time too uh, and then if you go even further back in history i mean it just gets more and more crazy which i don't think is necessarily relevant to what we're looking at right now but more importantly just kind of put things in perspective uh bitcoin got his first weekly total closure above this above the top side trolling demand last week and to date uh it's rallied up a little bit less than 10 percent uh, currently holding on to about 7% of that. So is that a bit of an outlier, would you say? I would say yes it is actually yes in fact it definitely is um and if we go over here to the monthly i'm curious if we see something similar as well because it's just been yeah it's, it's actually been very few times that we've even uh, seen this sort of a signature um but uh but it has happened a few times in the past during the very 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 strong rallies but to be fair like it actually you know usually doesn't spend too much time above the top side trolling demand when it does on the monthly but then again you know when we look at something like this a monthly on an asset that at this point in time over here was only around for 
five, six years, uh, that's just not enough history. This over here is a little bit different because it's it's about 10 years, a little bit more than 10 years old now. I think the birthday was actually just yesterday on Halloween, which is kind of funny. Um, or it's not really funny, but it is what it is, I guess. It's a fucking inanimate object. It's not born. <laughs> it's an idea. Um, but, uh, but yes, you know, probably going to take on a little bit more meaning here too. Uh, anyways, what else do we see uh, as far as this goes? Um... Uh, let's go back onto our regular charts over here and go and go to the monthly. So let's see what do we got. Or actually, before we do that, let's start with the weekly and let's kind of build upon it. So weekly, uh, weekly momentum, uh, very likely to continue upwards and onwards here too. Remember, it did hit this trend line from way back when, or I guess this was way back when on a different time frame. <laughs> uh, but going back all the way to October 2019, essentially, so getting these sort of uh, lows back around here and this low right here, and then more recently the $10,000 low. Uh, which uh, which Bitcoin continues to construct onwards and upwards. More importantly, though, we do see weekly RSI really showing that, uh, again, this is the culmination of about a three-year-long con uh, consolidation phase. And uh, it's just starting to break out right now in the way that I look at it. Um, again, short-term time frame, or sorry, short-term, I wouldn't be surprised if this does get knocked back and we test back down towards the exponential on this, but long-term, this is very fucking good here. Very fucking good. And historical volatility percentile on the weekly, which I don't know how much I trust it on the weekly, to be fair. Uh, but it is just getting above the uh, the moving average on this now, and moving average is starting to flatten out. And anytime that uh, we've seen historical volatility percentile on the weekly get above that, just sorry, just above the moving average, I mean, those are some pretty intense moves. Now, it does not give direction. It, do, it, it, it does not give direction at all. It does give um, uh, what's called uh, just uh, just just like severity of move, if you will. You know, for example, you got the coronavirus dump right here starting uh, actually just a few, just two, just one week before you get that signal, and then 53 and percent to the downside uh, same thing in 2018 right here as well it looks like yeah one week before and then boom 50 percent move to the downside you see this one right here getting out of this base before a almost 3x rally yeah 155 percent uh, move to the upside uh, more recently coming out of the coronavirus or actually no uh, no that would be uh, considerate of the past down move so we've already kind of covered off that and then you see this this whole phase right here after the last major consolidation phase from about 2013 to 2015 well what happens after it gets back above the moving average on this one as well well that's the start of your long-term rally for a lot <laughs> for a lot actually um so fair enough you know i just want to show that all these things are working together right now and this is really the time to be paying attention in bitcoin land i do think for the long term uh so let's go over to the monthly now and see how this one's shaping up here too as we do officially have the monthly closure literally just about in line with the last one although technically speaking bitcoin did not close on a new all-time high as far as monthlies go it did get pretty fucking close here at uh, 13816 versus uh, 13880 for for the prior close on stamp who cares if any of the other exchanges got a little bit closer uh, this is 804 this is 60 uh stan or sorry finex shows 788 versus oh actually uh finex finex did close on new all-time highs uh, but i don't think that finex matters as much to be honest with you uh, it's lost a significant amount of share since uh since it, since since its relevancy in like 2017 and a little bit in 2018 as well and uh, what about bitmex uh 802 versus 873 so yes you know for you know for the majority uh below but i i think it's more or less technical I do think that Bitcoin's probably probably going to do that, you know, into this next month, if I had to call it right now. Um, looking at uh, looking at monthly momentum oscillators, here's what I really, 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 really like. This is what we were speaking about uh, for fucking months on end. This is it. This is an incredibly constructive read right here, all going all the way from kind of uh, middle of tw tw uh, 2019 to where we are right now, uh, consulting right below the edge of the bullish control zone and now breaking into it for the first time in a long time. And, uh, you know, typically speaking, when you get that first break in, it does get pushed back similar to what you see right here in May 2016 on this first major pullback and also more recently right here in June 2019 on this hey get the fuck out on this major pullback right here as well but after that as you can see right here the next sort of test into it typically does stay in there and does get a lot of airtime and in this case right here I'm kind of looking at the same thing especially if the exponential gets inside the bullish control zone that's going to be interpreted as very long term good as well uh, looking at uh, looking at uh, monthly stokes nice and erect here although <laughs> getting a little bit high, but fair enough. I mean, that's I, I look at that as more or less good. Put this in perspective. Uh, when the monthly Stokes broke into the critical zone last, that was actually in December 2016. So 
keep that number or sorry keep that keep that month in mind december 2016 i'll say that once again uh december 2016 was actually right here so while it was technically in the critical zone which i again it's 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 a very naive thing to think that this that that's actually a bad thing it doesn't tell you shit actually it just tells you that things are trending incredibly strongly you should probably be looking at your uh, rsi if anything um in this case right here 20 uh, or about two thousand percent move to the upside after that so you know how much does it really mean uh, to me it just means good things realistically um so fair enough and also we have to remember that the bi-monthly closed as well and the bi-monthly is looking very 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 girthy here too now looking at the bi-monthly i do actually think and i'll say this right now i think that it'd be very naive to think that bitcoin's not going to test back down somewhere around eleven thousand five hundred to twelve thousand probably within these next two months but i do think that it is going to be an opportunity so i do want to be on the record as saying that i do think it's going to be an opportunity but i also do think that bitcoin way of will very likely test back down around those regions. Um, and of course, uh, if, if Bitcoin does break 12.9 to the downside, that then that would be uh, then that would be my first major sort of uh, sort of uh, signal for such things. So with that in mind, um, checking this out from a momentum all sort of perspective, what do we see? Hey, out of my face, fucker. Uh, Bi-monthly stokes are really aggressively increasing right there. Uh, Bi-monthly RSI back in the bullish control zone. I mean, all these things are good right now. So you know, just adding all the uh, adding all the puzzle pieces together. Long term, I do like this. In long term, I you know, I, I do think that it'd be. Uh, I, I don't like saying things like this, but because we are in the TA nerd session, I do think that Bitcoin likely does retest its prior highs, or maybe it makes new all-time highs, or whatever it is. Uh, probably over the next three to six months, if I had to guess. Um, although I don't feel all that confident about that but because the ranges are fucking massive they're they're absolutely astronomical right now which is why we love bitcoin as a trader or at least why i love bitcoin as a trader um uh so i do think that there will be some pretty nasty downs uh amongst there as well we spoke about this a lot yesterday just going over the very nasty dumps that you saw all throughout this run right here which you know eventually led bitcoin all the way from 250 to 20,000 bucks but there were several um uh not not just several but uh, a lot a lot of you know 30 to 40 percent dumps along the way and that's how you generate liquidity for these major upside runs so while i while i am overall bullish on bitcoin on the long term i would not be surprised at all in fact i'm actually looking for it to, for bitcoin to come back down somewhere around 11.5 to 12 thousand bucks and then it, and and, that, and that's probably gonna be another major opportunity in my opinion um or at least I'd look at it as such, and uh, and kind of you know take take risk where risk is uh, is necessary. Um, anyways, as it is right now, you know short term, uh, like I said, probably extremely short term. Maybe does trade back up towards like thirteen eight fifty or thirteen nine. But I do think that this run is probably going to be going into a sideways consolidation. And could it be that Bitcoin actually does play at that move to the downside first before uh, before it does get some more uh, tries to the upside? Yeah, ve uh, very well. Especially if we do break below twelve nine, that would be my main dis disposition. So. So again, putting all the puzzles piece together, it's like I can say on one hand, yeah, I, I do think that Bitcoin probably does head back up towards those more uh, crazy numbers that I don't like saying. Um, at the same time, uh, I do think that Bitcoin uh, very not just not just very likely, but extremely likely will come back down somewhere around eleven five or twelve thousand and try to put in another major macro base there. Um, can I be wrong on that? Yes, and that is why I have this twelve nine area marked off for, uh, on right here. So as long as that holds, technically speaking, I do treat it as a pivot hey fucker get out of my face um and uh and basically that's that's all i have to say about that so fair enough uh let's see what else do we want to talk about um not really anything to update of course on traditional markets or forex or anything like that as they are closed over the weekend uh, but we can, but what we can do is we can check out some of the altcoins like link and link what's link doing is it following bitcoin not not really <laughs> not really so altcoins really oh actually that reminds me let's just go look at the bitcoin dominance fuck fuck link um Let's look at Bitcoin. Oh, what's this? <laughs> all of the bearish bungholes, all sorry, all of the altcoin bullahs bungholes uh, impaled on this bearish uh, on this bearish shoulder right there. Jesus, man, nasty. But uh, you might say that I'm bullish on this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm still holding on to what I said. I did say uh, over the last few months coming to this region right here, which we had marked off from several months beforehand coming out of uh, I think it was March, April of this year. Uh, that very likely we'd head back up towards the mid 60% regions and we're almost there. I think it's got a little bit more before the next major pullback, uh, probably somewhere around 65 to 66%. And then long term, again, it's I, I'm not uh, I'm, I'm certainly not bearish on anything that looks like this. Uh, but here's the thing. I don't trust I don't trust um, 
any sort of momentum oscillators. I don't trust any sort of moving average. I don't trust really any TA on, on this, except for levels and trend. And in this case right here, uh, feel pretty good about that one, to be honest with you. Uh, not, not to fucking toot my own horn, and I really dislike it when other people do it, so I'll probably just uh, call myself out on it my, uh, myself. But yeah, I do think that this heads up uh, significantly more, in fact. Um, I think that this was maybe even a generational low, and you're going to see alts not just have a full retrace for the most part. There's going to be some that are massively successful, of course, uh, but you're going to see new lows on that, uh, you know, on that retrace as well. So we'll go check out link versus dollar. And, and that is, again, not to say that they're going to actually be uh, going down versus dollar. Dollar. No, in fact, they probably go at least sideways and probably up versus the dollar. Uh, link on the weekly. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm still not too enamored by this chart right here. Uh, monthly, monthly looks okay. You know, it, do, it does offer up a very easy pivot. Just kind of playing this as a doji little right there with continuation uh, and uh, continuation applied both to the upside and downside above or below the uh, the the uh, the top side and the bottom side of wick. So you know, it does it does offer a pretty damn easy play right there. Ideally, this one's going to do whatever Bitcoin does. So if I had to call it, you know, probably trade sideways and then and then try some more upside alongside Bitcoin. If I had to call it right here, I, I don't think that this one's going to break down to like fucking five bucks or something uh, while Bitcoin rallies up to you know, maybe 15 or 16,000 bucks. No, I don't think that that's what, what would be happening. At the very least, it'd go sideways. And this one being one of the more strong ones probably does get a chance to rally. But as far as the short-term timeframes go right here, even on a daily, this is a very unhelpful chart as far as I'm concerned. Uh, if anything, I'd say maybe another short-term move to the downside, but I'd be looking for it to pull through at the same time as well. I don't think that we're going to be breaking to new lows even below like seven and a half bucks right now. Um, so fair enough. That was incredibly unhelpful. What I just said right there. It's like I don't really, I don't really know. It's going to do whatever Bitcoin does. Well, that's 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 my suspicion. That's also why I don't really care to trade altcoins uh, either. <laughs> uh, let's go check out Buterol. Nope, that's Euro Dollar. Kind of similar, but not quite. Uh, Buterol over here. What do we see? Um, does look like it wants to have a uh, do, does look like it wants to have a short term try to the upside. Uh, looking at daily. Again, not really getting much from this chart weekly. You know, it's it's the same thing as Link, right? It's just bouncing off of the 10 simple right here. I'm, I'm not bearish on something that looks like this. You know, if it starts to close below the 10 simple, yeah, sideways and down is going to be the name of the game. But for right now, I, I'd at the very least want to see the weekly closure. And uh, and I imagine that Butero right here is going to be probably just following Bitcoin in general. So if I had to call up, yeah, it probably does move to the upside on the short term time frames maybe back up towards uh, 400 bucks short term. And then uh, and then on the daily weekly, I'd be looking for it to pop back up towards like 415 or 420. And then uh, and then we'll come back to it after that. But for right now, yeah, just generally going to follow Bitcoin. I'm curious if there's anything else. I'm actually curious about Ripple's doing just just out of, just 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 genuine curiosity here, not to like shit on any Ripple people. But I, you know, it's just it was so popular so many years ago. And uh, it seems to me like I, I don't really see any any people with like XRP in their name anymore. So maybe that's uh, maybe that's a signal. How deep in this video are we? 32 minutes. Okay, it's maybe a little bit too long by now. Uh, but fuck it, man. It's my Sunday, and I don't have anything better to do. So uh, where are you, Ripple? My nipples? Um, wow, an, ab an absolute garbage chart right here. Uh, pff, this one actually does look like it wants to go down, to be fair. This one looks like it wants to come back down to like 20 cents. Uh, what about Monero? Monero being one of the better ones, too. Uh, we, should actually, we should actually catch up on this one more often because it, it has been doing things that um, it's actually been leading Bitcoin in some ways. You can see it making new runs or new highs on this run uh, much much earlier than bitcoin yeah putting in a higher low right here i imagine that there's probably maybe even some hidden bullish divergence forming yes indeed there is uh, any sort of a any sort of a tick higher above yesterday's high or just a closure higher above 127 and i would be looking at this to, to put in another rally back up towards about 132 133 ish region uh short term uh, of course if we do get a closure below the 21 then i would extend targets to the downside at 113 and that probably does come along uh side bitcoin having some downside displeasures as well but Looking at the weekly here now, this 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 lo this looks fine. Looking at the monthly also looks fine. Uh, similar to Bitcoin, you know, while I do think that Bitcoin probably does come back down somewhere around 11.5 or, or or 12, uh, I'd be looking for this one to come back down somewhere around like 110 to 115 ish region, um, and then actually put in probably another pace there. I mean, this looks pretty good here. Uh, to be fair, it looks it looks it looks very good as is. Um, so with that uh, with that with that in the back of my mind, so let's go back on over here bit, uh, to, uh, to Bitcoin and wrap this bitch up. Uh, short term, like I said, no major biases on this price action. If anything, extremely, extremely short term. I'd probably be looking for this one to pop back up, maybe around like 13.850 to 13.9 ish region. But I do think that Bitcoin will very likely put, uh, put in a local top right there and then trade back down. 
uh, to open up the weeks, so, you know, somewhere in the low thirteen thousand dollar region would be completely fine. Uh, thirteen to uh, thirteen two, uh, just uh, ju just off the top of my head, I'll actually put a nice little horizontal right here. It does actually line up with quite a few other things on both the four hour and the daily. Um, and then of course, you know, the base on this current consolidation is going to be all the way down to twelve nine. So anywhere around here. It's fine by me. Um, below 12.9, things do change around again, and I would look for extensions down to at the very least like low $12,000. And could that could that be the run that actually does produce that 11.5 tick, or, or is 12 or is 12 enough? Possibly yes. Uh, in fact, I'd probably be looking for that. Um, but uh, but for right now, you know, short uh, you know short term, a little bit of sideways and down, and then I'd be looking for Bitcoin to actually try another another high on this rally, uh, probably sometime this month. Actually, uh, things do look more or less good over the long term. And uh, with that said, I want to wish you the best of the best. I also want to wish you the happiest of the happiest. I'm hungry as fuck, so I'm gonna go eat a lot of food. Take care. <laughs>